aphids are some of the pests I hate the most. They suck the sap out of my plants and then they suck the vigor, transmit disease, weaken my plants. Ultimately, that hits my harvest really hard. Khaled here with the Plant Charmer channel. Today, I'm showing you guys three natural organic methods for getting rid of aphids permanently so you can get a great, productive, bountiful harvest. Okay, so what are aphids and what do they do? So aphids are small, soft-bodied insects that primarily feed on the sap of plants by puncturing the leaves with their mouth parts and then extracting the juice out. So this is what you've got in this video right now. What I'm shooting is a clump, a cluster of aphids that are all at the same spot, sucking the sap out of that leaf right here. So this is just, let me just uh, back up a little bit so you can see the plant. These are these fake rhubarbs. I'm not exactly sure what kind of plant it is, but it, it's a weed. It comes back every year uh, in my garden. It's very, very common. I'm sure you guys have seen that before. And these plants are basically aphid magnets, most likely because their sap contains a lot of sugar. So if you look closely, these aphids are just not moving and it's not their job to move. So their job is just to extract sap from these leaves and produce a liquid called honeydew. So you've probably seen that around. It's a sticky liquid. You find that on leaves sometimes. You probably wondered where it was, what it was. Well, it's aphid sap. So the really, really interesting part about aphids is that they're not mobile at all. So they barely move on their own. The entity that moves them is called ants. So let me just find a spot where you've got all kinds of ants, which are basically destroying the leaf. So let's just have a look closer at this leaf here, right there. See, this is absolutely infested. And if you notice, you've got ants running around. So the first sign that will allow you to determine or that will clue you in as to the presence of aphids is going to be ants moving up and down the stems. So look at this. Pretty dramatic. Now they're all, they're all basically running for their lives because I've pulled the leaves away, but they're definitely hard at work here. So that is the challenging part. Because the ants are so efficient and so smart, uh, they just keep farming these aphids, extracting the honeydew, and of course your plants in the garden are prime targets. All right, so I don't take too much issue with the presence of aphids in the garden. Uh, they usually do not go up my vertical systems. It's pretty rare that I see them there. Sometimes they do. I did find them in this row of Albion strawberry uh, that I've got growing in the mini. Let me just back up so you guys get a view. All right, oh, there goes the tripod. So there you go. So that's the mini. Let's get a little closer. These plants are doing great, by the way. Look at this, they're beautiful. The leaves are huge, uh, they're bushy, but we've got a little issue with the aphids in these, in these plants. So I might not be able to see a lot because I blast them with water all the time. Uh, let me just see if I can find the aphids or at least the ants that are farming them. So it looks like I've pretty much cleared it, but it's guaranteed there's still aphids in here. So we're going to show, well, we're going to treat these plants today to ensure that the aphids are gone and I'll show you guys three methods uh, for doing that very efficiently. Uh, but first, I want to show you the damage that the aphids actually do. So uh, look at this. Look at that. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me try to focus. Okay, so you've got a couple of ants on this leaf here. See that? So guarantee there's aphids in here. There, you might not see them with your with the naked eye, but there's aphids. Actually, if you unfold that leaf, there was one right here, which I just crushed, that little black dot. So excuse me for the jittering camera. It's very difficult to focus and holding the camera at the same time. All right, so we're just gonna leave it at that for now. So uh, the damage they're doing, I've been blasting them with water, but the damage they're doing is actually pretty obvious. So these folded leaves, look at that. That is pretty dramatic. So look how they've degraded that leaf before it even had a chance to open. So that's what's gonna happen. That means there's aphids inside that leaf, which are sucking the sap out of these new shoots and new shoots are definitely the most susceptible. So we really wanna do something about that. So now that I've showed you uh, the damage and now that you understand what aphids are, let me just show you three natural organic methods for getting rid of them. 
All right, so I'm gonna show you guys three methods starting with the least harmful, harmful, sorry, or least toxic going towards the more harmful. So of course you're gonna start uh, gradually increasing the, the heat on these aphids if the, uh, the methods you use at first do not work. But I strongly suggest you go with the milder stuff first and then escalate when things get bad. You know, this is just like war. So you're not gonna come out with the nuclear weapons right away. We're gonna to try to negotiate. So uh, what that means in plant terms or in gardening terms is we're gonna grab the water hose so I've got the water hose here, hose link by the way, great stuff. It's got all kinds of adjustments which are really useful uh, for things such as taking care of aphids. So I've got a setting here that says flat. It's pretty much uh, a pressurized jet. So if you look at this here, that's what I'm getting. So it's low flow, but high pressure, which is good for our plants. That's what we want to do. So we want some pressure, but we don't want to flood anything. So you're going to grab your uh, watering gun turn it on and then you're going to aim it at the plant where you're getting all these aphids so you're trying to blast them off the plant basically so uh in order not to stress your plants too much here's one trick i can give you put your hand behind to support the plant and blast away okay so make sure you hit all the parts of the plant including the underside of the leaves where aphids will often be as i showed you in the previous segment and make sure you hit it from all sides so if you were just to blast it to just blast it from here, what's going to happen is uh, all the aphids on this side are going to go, the ants are going to go, and after you do that two or three times, the ants are smart, they're going to learn uh, your behavior and they're going to start farming the aphids right here on the other side. So you really need to hit all sides from the top as well so you can hit these leaves that are still uh, not unfurled. Uh, and you need to be thorough doing that. So that's very mild, it's water, does not stress the plant, and so we can actually blast for a good while and not have any problems. So. So again, my hand goes in the back of the plants, just so that the plants don't actually keel over and we don't pull on their root systems. So let's just finish this quickly. Another thing you can do also, if you want to hit them from the bottom, you can just flip that over, hit it like this, and then you can get the underside of the leaves very efficiently that way. All right, now that we've done that, we're going to go and do the back of the plants. All right, so I'm not going to do the last two plants. I'll do them off camera uh, because there's water everywhere. I've got electronic equipment around, so I'm not trying to mess anything up. But you guys get the idea. You blast them off and then they go flying everywhere. And because this is a vertical system, it also helps. Uh, that means it's not as easy for the plant, for the ants to pick up these aphids and put them back where they were. Or even if they're bringing new aphids up, they still got to go up the structure, which is a waste of energy, which is why I recommend always growing in vertical systems if you can. It's a bit more knowledge intensive in terms of technique but a lot more efficient all right so we're done with method number one super simple stuff everyone's got a watering hose at home you can do that uh, and it works really well but sometimes uh, you just need a little bit more so sometimes the infestation is a bit more advanced and you want to use something with an active uh, ingredient in it so uh, I'm holding right now regular spray bottle it's full of water it's got a teaspoon of dish soap in there and it's got three drops of uh, vegetable oil. It could be three, five, whatever. Just don't overdo it. Now, the soap, what it does is once you actually spray uh, on the plants, it hits the aphids. Uh, the water in that solution will evaporate, concentrating the soap residue. And what that's going to do is going to suck the moisture out of these, these ants and suck the moisture out of these aphids. So it's going to desiccate them. Uh, now, why do we put oil in there? I get that question a lot. Oil is what we call a surfactant. So a surfactant is simply that. It just helps the solution coat more evenly, more thoroughly and better. So it's just going to make sure that the solution does not just run off like water would, but it's going to stick a little bit more and that way it's going to be a bit more efficient. So. Uh, you want to get a fine mist so i'm not trying i'm trying not to spray on the camera too much but you guys probably saw that so fine mist will ensure better coverage than large droplets and you want to go at it and get 
complete coverage of the plants just like we did uh, with the uh, watering hose. Now I'm sure you guys are starting to see that this is a theme whenever you're spraying, complete coverage is super important. Otherwise you're just eliminating the competition uh, around the aphids that you forgot to spray. And then from there it just gets worse. So spraying the front thoroughly, get in there, get the crowns, top, get the crowns, get those leaves that are still not open. So being thorough when you spray means spraying everywhere, also means spraying to the point of runoff. So you know to stop spraying when it starts running off the leaves. So the back of the plant, super important. If we miss that, then we're going to be uh, having a problem. You know, in the back, the front's gonna be clear. Back is gonna stay really, uh, really bad in terms of aphids. And the ants are pretty smart. So what they're gonna do is if you kill them in the front, a couple of times they're going to start farming aphids only on the back and so uh, dealing with ants is really a challenge so our coverage is good coverage is good we've got the plants completely covered and if you notice do, did we cover enough do we have runoff i see runoff all right, so it doesn't need to be uh, waterfalls of runoff. It just needs to be a little bit of runoff just to ensure you've got a uh, solution everywhere. So now that this is done, the aphids uh, will be dead in about 10 minutes or so, the ants as well. And it's gonna be uh, an unwelcoming area for them for a little while. So uh, that's method number two, very mild. Everyone's got dish soap, uh, spray bottle will cost a dollar at the dollar store. And you can really do this very easily, super effective. So go for it if that's a mild problem of, of aphids that you have and that should help clear it out. All right, so method number three involves a little wand like this that's actually connected to a tank sprayer tank so this one is a one gallon i believe not sure uh we've got 40 milliliters of pyrethrin in there mixed with two liters or half a gallon of water now i'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but the water level or the solution level is right here we did not fill it up and if you guys buy a tank i strongly recommend you recommend you buy one larger than you need the reason for that is by leaving air here we can actually pump more pressure in there and we can do the entire garden one shot instead of having to go you know pumping away with the uh the spray bottle so just gonna pump some air in there here we go we're ready so pyrethrin goes the same way uh as the other sprays complete coverage fine mist as you can see small droplets provide a better coverage and we want to go ahead and spray everything now pyrethrin is a non-selective organic pesticide it's a nerve agent so it's very very strong it's an extract of the chrysanthemum flower being the only one of the three methods that actually involves a pesticide it's going to be a lot more effective than the water or the soap of course so uh, let's go ahead and cover our plants with that solution so spraying the back here i got here so it's a bit awkward for me but as you guys can see covering the back let's go to the front so we're just giving them really good coverage. We're going underside these leaves, underside these leaves, inside the crowns. And so we're just gonna water these plants or actually spray these plants really, really well. It's a very mild pesticide, by the way, in terms of if you compare that to uh, the chemical pesticides we hear about all the time with stuff that's manufactured by Bayer or Monsanto or whatever, this is not even considered a pesticide by them, uh, but it's definitely very, very strong. The difference between that and the synthetic and chemical uh, pesticides is this has a very short half-life of 12 hours. So half-life, for those who don't know, means that in 12 hours, this product or this potency will be divided by half. In another 12 hours, it will be divided by half again. And if you continue that, you can see that it's gonna be rendered impotent very quickly. So let's just finish spraying. Now, the thing with pyrethrin is that it's actually phototoxic. So what that means is it's, it's actually going to burn your plants or your leaves if you do not rinse it. So not only is it going to kill all the pollinators it comes in contact with, so uh, bees, uh, wasps, on hot days like this, they go for, if you notice when you water your plants, the, the wasps start going around. And the reason for that is they're looking for water. So they're just landing on your plants, drinking these droplets. Now, if we don't rinse that, we're going to kill all that insect life. So, uh, and we're also going to burn our plants. So our coverage is finished. Again, we've got some runoff on the other side. So we're ready to actually rinse that off. So we're gonna put this sprayer aside, grab the watering gun, shower mode. 
when you've got the hose extended like I have and it has not been used for a little bit, make sure you actually uh, purge that hot water out because there's burning hot water on my hand right now. Not burning, but it's very hot. I could take a shower with this. And so make sure you run that water out until it goes back to cool, which is now. All right. So just rinse the plants very thoroughly. What you can do also when you're rinsing plants, by the way, is you can grab them like a bouquet of flowers like this and like this, and that's it. See? A lot easier to get all the leaves. And the trick here is really to use large amounts of water. So you really rinse it off, and whatever you don't rinse has actually been diluted quite a bit. So our plants are now treated. I'm pretty certain everything in there is dead. Uh, make sure you watch the next part of the video because I'm going to give you some critical information uh, to help you make these treatments last instead of having to uh, face that same problem every month or the whole summer. All right, so I've showed you guys three organic methods for three. Yeah, that's not three. Uh, three organic methods for getting rid of aphids in the garden, very efficient. So you've got the escalation available to you. You can start with the uh, pressurized water jet. Uh, you can actually move on to that dish soap solution. And if you've got problems still, you can move on to that pyrethrin. Now you can also combine these, these methods. So if you've got a very large infestation, you can go with the blast of water at first, clear up some of that, then pass with the dish soap. Or you can go with the dish soap and then use the pyrethrin. So that's all going to depend on the severity of the invasion or the infestation you're facing. Now, critical piece of information, if you want this to last and be effective, you need to repeat these treatments every three to five days for two weeks. So the reason for that is that uh, in some cases because we try to get the whole life cycle of the pest such as fungus gnats and pests like that. In this case it's not going to be that. It's going to be uh, basically repelling the ants that are going to try to come back and farm aphids on these plants. Now don't forget they know that location, they know these plants, they know there's food and they were there in the first place. So uh, the first place they're going to return in order to get sap or in order to farm their aphids is wherever they were before. So we're just going to be repeating these treatments every three to five days for two weeks, discourage any ants from coming back there, kill all the aphids. And once the ants actually realize that there's less, there's more energy that needs to be expanded in order to get that sap than energy that is extracted from them, it's simple mathematics. They will leave and they will find another source of a uh, honeydew. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, my name is Khaled, known as the Plant Charmer. I'm going to make a complete series this season on how to deal with aphids, fungus, gnats, uh, spider mites, name it. So this is the first of many. I hope you guys get that done in your garden and it fixes your problems. Until then, keep it green and I'll see you next time.